Hi there, everyone. Today we are going to be taking just a few minutes to talk about uh, some of the most powerful typhoons in recent history. And one of the main reasons behind it is actually we've been talking about global warming lately and how storms are becoming stronger and stronger. That may be uh, the case in many basins, but actually I was taking a look at some of the uh, most recent strongest storms in the Western Pacific. Most strongest in the top five are mainly in the 60s and 70s. So let's actually bring this up here. And starting with number five, it's actually a three-way tie. We're starting with Super Typhoon Vanessa or Reming, which actually uh, blew up in just south of Guam, pulled off towards the west, got down to a pressure of 880 millibars, an absolutely intense storm system, winds right around 220 kilometers per hour with the system. But the good news, it did not touch any land masses. That was in 1984. The next one on the list is actually Typhoon Rita, which uh, developed there in 1978. If you are in the Philippines and you're around in 1978, I am sure you remember this one. It got down to 880 millibars as well, 220 kilometers per hour, thus tied as well for number five. But this one hit land and it did cause extensive damage across the Philippines and a significant loss of life as it pushed overhead and dwindled out in the South China Sea. But it did get down to that very very deep pressure. Then we talk about the other number five spot, which was actually Typhoon Kit, which uh, did not hit land as well, and really formed in 1966 when uh, Reconnaissance Aircraft was in its infancy. So uh, many people question if this one really was uh, down to the 880 millibar level, but nonetheless, it, it is up there with the top five. Now let's uh, take a look at number four, though. Number four is actually Typhoon Ida, which formed in 1958, and if we're going to talk about the deaths associated with the top five strongest storms in recorded history in the Western Pacific basin it actually is by far the deadliest. Many of them actually just stayed offshore, but Typhoon Ida hit Honshu, caused about 1,900 at least recorded mudslides, uh, at least 1,200 deaths as it dropped down to pressure right around 877 millibars here in 1958, and caused uh, a damage upwards of equivalent to about 50 million uh, U.S. dollars in 1958 due to inflation much, much, much higher now. But it really, it reached a strongest point just towards the south of Honshu and probably would have been a lot worse if it did maintain that intensity as it pushed off towards the north. All right, so we're going to go down to number three, which was actually June, a uh, super typhoon June or Rosing. It formed in 1975, and once again, just like some of the other storms, this one did not uh, touch shore. It actually got down to 875 HBA, but it stayed out over the water throughout its duration of its lifetime. And just a few years before that, we actually had our Super Typhoon Nora in there in 1973. That down, got down to 875 HPA, hit the northern portions of the Philippines. At least uh, about 18 fatalities recorded with that one, but it was there as well in the 70s, just like June prior to it, or two years after that, actually. And then number one, the one that you uh, definitely everybody knows because it is the strongest uh, storm recorded in history, at least on the face of the earth, and at least in recorded history in 1979 by reconnaissance aircraft uh, just towards the west of Guam is where the pressure was recorded down to 800 and 70 HPA. Winds in the storm were gusting up to 305 kilometers per hour. Thankfully, it did not hit any land masses while it was at that intensity. It did gradually weaken and it did cause uh, widespread damage actually across Japan as it started to loop back off towards the north. But the strongest pressure, thankfully, was farther down towards the south. And with Typhoon Tip, there was actually 86 fatalities recorded, over 100 injured as well all across uh, much of Japan here as it did blow overhead, gradually weakened, eventually moving off towards the north, but definitely going down as the strongest storm in history. Really, a lot of these were actually taken by reconnaissance aircraft, which is no longer available for the Western Pacific every now and then, but uh, the GTWC doesn't even put nothing out there. JMA doesn't fly anything as well. They really use the Dvorak scale to grade the, if storms get that strong. So uh, in recent history, they may have been stronger, but there wasn't any confirmation out there for that. And just to put it in perspective, the strongest storm in the Atlantic Basin, which was Hurricane Wilma, got down to 882 HPA. That is not even the same as any in the top five, which started at 880 HPA uh, for our typhoons out here. So really, storms in the Western Pacific definitely 
some of the strongest storms on Earth. But as all for right now, though, thanks for watching this quick little uh, update on the top five strongest storms in the Western Pacific. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can always post them in the comment box below. And as always, though, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.